Hello students, this is Padmini Vaag from Department of Biotechnology, KTHM College, Nasik. And this video lecture is prepared for TYBSC Biotechnology students and subject name is DBT 503 Plant Tissue Culture. And unit number 5, G subtopic in which anther and pollen culture is the unit 5. And topic will be covered that is anther and pollen culture, then introduction, history, androgenesis and protocol and pathways of development. So, let's begin with the recap. In previous session, we have discussed about the cell theory. So, this uh, cell, it is structural and functional unit of life. This cell theory was proposed by the Sheldon and Schwann and the cellular totipotency, we have seen the term cellular totipotency. It means the plant cell having ability to regenerate into entire plant means totipotency meaning of totipotency is it is having total potential to develop or to regenerate into the complete plant leg. Then we have seen the plant tissue culture concept. This in plant tissue culture it is nothing but the technique in which the plants are regenerated on the artificially prepared media and under controlled condition we can get the entire plantlet by using the single cell or any part of the plant. Then we have also discussed about the aseptic techniques. This plant tissue culture technique, it is impossible without the aseptic techniques. Why the aseptic techniques are important in plant tissue culture? So, this aseptic uh, techniques, they confer the uh, media or culture free from any kind of microorganisms. This microorganisms, it, it uh, present in the culture media, then they contaminate the entire culture. So, we should avoid the any contaminant to confer the aseptic condition. We can maintain the strict aseptic conditions here. The culture medium, it also play the important role. Culture medium is nothing but the artificially supplemented nutrients to the growing plant cells. So, in previous lecture, we have discussed all these points. Now, in this session, we will see the anther and pollen culture, its introduction and principle, then history of anther and pollen culture, then androgenesis. What is androgenesis? Uh, it is nothing but the generation of haploid plantlets. Then protocol of anther and pollen culture will be discussed in today's session. So, let's begin with the anther and pollen culture. After completing anther and pollen culture, you will be able to define the anther and pollen culture. Then you can state the concept of anther and pollen culture. Then let's see the history of anther and pollen culture. This W. Uh, Tulek in 1953, he has used the Jinko biloba plant. Its pollen grains are used first time to develop the haploid callus. Next, let's see the history of anther and pollen culture. W. Tulek in 1953, he has used the Jinko biloba plant and pollen grains of Jinko biloba plant to regenerate the haploid callus and very first time he used the uh, pollen grains for developing the callus. Then Guha and Maheshwari in 1964, he has used the uh, Datura inoxia plant and anthers are used to regenerate the embryos from the explant. Then Borgin and Nish in 1963, they have used the anthers of uh, Nicotiana tabacum plant to regenerate the complete haploid plantlets. So, let's see anther and pollen culture in detail. These anthers, they are present in flower in all the angiosperm. Angiosperms are the 
uh, flower bearing plants and in flower bearing plants the anthers are present and what is anther this anther is the part of stamen which contains the pollen it is nothing but the uh, this male gametophytes are developed inside the anther then what is pollen this pollen is the fertilizing powder which get discharged from the anther and this pollens they are uh, also called as the microspore and these are considered as a male gametophyte here in the diagram you can see various parts of anther so this anther it is divided into various parts like pollen sac in pollen sac the pollen uh, grains are uh, formed and after dehiscence the pollen grains they get released from the anther and then they when they get transfer on the stigma the fertilization takes place and then embryo will form so let's see the anther culture this anther culture it is the technique of culturing the anthers this anthers are taken at the precise and critical stage which is to be isolated from the unopened flower bud why we should take it from the uh, unopened flower bud because in unopened floral bud this pollens they are taken before the dehiscence stage which are uh, in unfertilized stage and this pollens which are taken at the critical or precise stage of anther they are cultured on the artificial medium supplemented with the appropriate concentration of phytohormone then let's see the pollen culture in pollen culture is nothing but the microspore culture and it is uh, the culturing of pollen in in vitro uh, condition and preferably this pollen grains are selected at uninucleated stage and they are squeezed out aseptically from the intact anther and then it is cultured on the nutrient media which is supplemented with the appropriate concentration of phytohormone that is auxin and cytokine so let's see after doing or after performing anther and pollen culture we will get the haploid plants and this process of development of haploid plant it is called the androgenesis so let's see androgenesis in detail after after completing the androgenesis you will uh, learn about the process of androgenesis and its modes so let's see androgenesis this androgenesis is nothing but the in vitro development of haploid plants which are originated from the totipotent pollen grains through the series of cell divisions and differentiation so this haploid plants are produced from the anther or pollen so when you are using the anther culture that time also we squeeze the anther and pollen it release and this pollen will regenerate into the entire haploid plants haploid plants what are the haploid plants these are nothing but the plants which carry the single set of chromosome normally if plant it is having diploid chromosome number means two sets of chromosome number if present in that plant during gamete formation the meiosis takes place and we know that meiosis is the reductional division and through reductional division the total set of chromosome it get re uh, reduced and because of this after gamete formation the daughter gamete cell it receives the half number of chromosome and that's why here in pollen or anther culture the haploid plants are produced after culturing them in in vitro condition means this gamete they carrying the half set of chromosome that is haploid number of chromosomes are present in the anther or pollen and this get transfer and they regenerate the plantlet which is carrying the single set of chromosome which we called haploid plants 
So this production of haploid plantlet it is called androgenesis. So this androgenesis can be carried out through two different modes. First is direct androgenesis and second is indirect androgenesis. So here we will see the principle of anther and pollen cultures first. So here this pollen and anther culture it carried out for producing the haploid plantlets means plants production of plants which carries the single set of chromosome. Then occurrence of single set of chromosome will be there in the plantlet. And the normal development of this pollen to become a male gamete it is stopped here during the uh, haploid plantlet generation. Then it is diverted coarsely for vegetative cell division instead of this meiosis. So, let's see the origin of sporophytes from the pollen grain in anther culture. Actually, in angiosperm, this gametophytic generation it is very lace because it is up to the formation of male gametophyte or female gametophyte. So, here here you can see the sporophyte generation. So, this microspore may follow any of the four pathways. Here in diagram you can see that this microspore it undergoes four pathways and after this four pathways it uh, forms the multinuclear pollen grain and this multinuclear pollen grain later may directly form the embryo or it may produce the callus tissue. Means as we seen in the last slide that is uh, there are two modes of androgenesis either direct androgenesis or indirect androgenesis. If direct androgenesis is there it means this uh, microspore multinuclear uh, pollen grain or microspore that will directly form the embryo and then plantlet will regenerate it. And if indirect mode of androgenesis is there, it means first callus will form and after callus formation, the embryo will form and then entire plantlet will form. Next is the protocol for anther culture. So, after completing the protocol of anther culture, you will learn about the procedure of anther culture and you will uh, know about the steps involved in the diploid plant, uh, sorry, haploid plant formation, and you can draw the diagram to de depict the anther culture. So, protocol it includes the first step that is collection of unopened flower bud. Here, why we select the unopened flower bud? Because we want to take pollen before the dehiscent stage means before fertilization this pollen grains in critical form that is uninucleated stage it is selected for haploid plant uh, generation. So, after collection of unopened flower bud the second step is the surface sterilization. Surface sterilization why surface sterilization is important because all the microbes which are present on the surface of this unopened flower bud, it should get removed completely because this contaminant they may compete, compete with the growing culture cells or growing anthers or growing pollen for the nutrition, for taking the nutrition. So, in surface sterilization, what we do first take the unopened floral bud. Then wash it under the tap water, then wash it with tipol or twin 20 solution, then again wash it with tap water, running tap water 2 to 3 times, then wash it with distilled water, and then take the washed unopened flower bird into the laminar airflow. This laminar airflow it is used for the aseptic transfer of any explant on the artificial medium. So, 
we should know what is meaning of explant. This explant is nothing but the plant part which we want to inoculate or which we want to transfer on the artificial media. So here anther is used as a as an explant. So after taking the anthers, washed anther into the laminar air flow, uh, again we can uh, we should wash it with the 0.1% HgCl2 solution. And then after washing it with the sterilant that is HgCl2, either HgCl2 or sodium hypochlorite can be used or silver nitrate can be used. So after washing them with any of the sterilant, we can transfer them into 70% ethanol. And after 70% ethanol wash for 30 seconds, Again, wash them with three to four times with sterile double distilled water. And then this explant, now it is ready for the, uh, for the next step. Then it is taken on the sterile petri plate and then anthers are excised. Then we can select the anthers in next step and then you can uh, inoculate it on the MS medium supplemented with phytohormones, then incubated. For incubation, here we require 25 degrees Celsius temperature and we can incubate them in dark condition and relative humidity, it is maintained at 60%. After that, these embryoids will obtain, either embryoid or callus will obtain. As I have told you, uh, either direct androgenesis or indirect androgen androgenesis will occur. If direct androgenesis is there, then directly embryoids will obtain. Otherwise, in indirect androgenesis, first callus will obtain and then embryoids will obtain after transferring them on the uh, new freshly prepared culture media. Then after obtaining the either embryoids or callus, the plantlets are regenerated finally. So, we can't transfer them directly into the field because in field, the harsh climatic conditions are there. They may destroy or they may harm the uh, tender plantlet. So, before transferring them, the acclimatization is, the, uh, is needed. So, what is meaning of acclimatization? So, acclimatization is nothing but the adaptation to the harsh environment. So, for this purpose, we can transfer the plantlet which has grown in the media, MS media. So, they can transfer on the sterile soil in greenhouse. And after that, after growing them in greenhouse condition, after a few weeks, you can transfer them into the field. Then, let's see the next that is anther culture protocol. So, here diagram shows the anther culture protocol which we have seen. Uh, this uh, healthy mother plant, it is selected first, then unopened floral birds are collected, then washing of uh, this unopened floral bird, then surface sterilization by using sodium hypochlorite and 70% ethanol. And after that, splitting the flower bird and, uh, and taking the anther. So, in this case, what we should do? We should remove the stem end portion and only anthers at critical stage they have selected. Why we should remove or eliminate the filament? Because if this filament portion, it is grown on the culture media, that is MS media. If it is grown there, then instead of getting haploid plants, you may get the diploid plant. So, to avoid this situation, what you should do? You should eliminate the filament tissues first and take anthers only. Then after selecting the anther, transfer them on the Murashige and Scoob media. That is nothing but the MS media which is supplemented with the phytohormone and then incubate it at 25 degrees Celsius temperature in dark condition. 
for several weeks. After that, either direct or indirect androgenesis can be observed. If indirect androgenesis, then callus will form on the anther. And after obtaining the callus, the cytodifferentiation will take place. Then during cytodifferentiation, either organogenesis will occur or collogenesis or rhizogenesis or colorhizogenesis will obtain. And after that, entire plant will regenerate. And if the direct uh, androgenesis is there, then on anther, the embryoids will develop directly and then they will regenerate into the entire plant leg. So, next is the protocol for pollen culture. So, after learning the uh, protocol for pollen culture, you will uh, be able to illustrate the protocol of uh, pollen culture. Then you will be knowing the steps involved in the pollen isolation from the anther and you will be able to draw the neat well labeled uh, diagram. You can draw the uh, neat well labeled diagram to depict the anther and pollen culture. So, let us see the protocol of pollen culture in detail. So, here first step involved is collection of unopened flower bird. It is same as a anther culture. So, here the flower birds are taken in unopened stage. Why? Because here we are interested in uninucleated stage, not in binucleated. Okay. Then surface sterilization of anther. So after uh, after collection of the unopened flower bird, we should surface sterilize it by using some detergent like uh, TPOL or Twin 20 is used for washing them. And after washing, proper washing of anthers, we can take it inside the laminar airflow uh, for a septic transfer. And here the surface trailants are used. So 0.1% HGCL2 is used and 70% ethanol is used for surface realization. Then again, wash it with uh, uh, 3 to 4 times with uh, sterile distilled water. After that, these anthers are taken into the sterile petri plate and these anthers are pressed to squeeze out the pollen grains. Then after squeezing the pollens, filter it and then take a filtrate and then centrifuge the filtrate to obtain the pollen. This pollen will settle at the bottom and then inoculate the pollen and after inoculating the pollen on the Murashige and Scoob media, you will, uh, you will get the uh, young embryoid after incubating it, incubating it at 25 degrees Celsius in dark condition. Then finally, you will get the haploid plantlets and before transferring them into the field, acclimatization should be done properly. So, here in diagram, you can see the anther and pollen culture in detail. So, first anthers are selected at a precise stage and then squeeze the anther so as to release the pollens, then filter it to the uh, fil filtration assembly and then you will collect the uh, pollen grain solution, then centrifuge it properly. After centrifugation, the pollen grains will settle down at the bottom and then after transferring them on appropriate media, you will get the embryoids, either embryoids directly or callus will form. So, here in another uh, pathway, you can see the anthers, they they are used to release the pollens and after uh, releasing the pollen, after centrifugation, these pollens are used for plating and after plating, you will get the callus and this callus is used for again embryoid development and then you will regenerate the 
entire haploid plant plate. Then here in uh, next diagram, uh, you can see the anther and pollen culture in detail. So, flower bird is selected in which the anther is present, this anther is taken and this anther, it carries the microspore mother cells. How this pollen, it is produced inside the anther, it produces inside the microspore mother cell through meiosis. And through meiosis, as we know, it is reductional division. Because of this reductional division, if the plantlet, it is deployed in nature, but this microspore formation, during microspore formation, the uh, chromosome number, it get reduced. And the gamete that will receive the half number of chromosome. So, after undergoing the meiotic division, the pre-mitotic stage of microspore is there. After that, mitotic stage is there. And after that, post-mitotic stage is there. So, this all the stages that is pre-mitotic, then mitotic and post-mitotic, these are the steps of mitosis. Means after meiosis, the mitosis will occur. So, during this my, uh, mitosis, the spreads of microspore will form. Means, in one microspore, the four tetrads will form. And in this, uh, in this microspore, we should select it at the critical stage, that is uninucleated stage. So, we are interested in uninucleate stage. Because this uninucleate stage, it will develop further into the entire haploid plantlet. And if we want to produce the diploid or homozygous diploid plant in that case also, what you can do after getting the uninucleated state or state of microspore, you should use the mutagenic treatment that is 0.5% colchicine treatment. It is given for 24 to uh, 48 hours for getting the uh, microspore into binucleate stage. And after, after plating the binucleated state microspore on the appropriate media, you will get the plantlet which is having the diploid chromosome number. But it is the haploid, uh, sorry, it is the homozygous diploid. Homozygous diploid means from single cell uh, set of chromosome, the duplication of chromosome, it occurs because of mutagen treatment and then this double haploids which are said to be the diploid plants will produce. So, let's see the summary of today's session. In today's session, we have learned about the anther culture, its introduction and principle then pollen culture introduction and principle, then history of anther and pollen culture. Then we have also seen what is androgenesis, which is the formation of haploid plants. And we have seen the entire protocol for regeneration of haploid plants and how we can, uh, we can produce the uh, diploid plants through the haploid plants. Means by using mutagenesis, we can regenerate the diploid plants also. Recap of next session. In next session, we will discuss about the homozygous plants. How homozygous plants are produced by using the haploid plants. Then method for development of this homozygous plants. Then importance of anther and pollen culture. Actually, this anther and pollen culture it is used for regeneration of haploid plant and these haploid plants are helpful for plant breeding experiments and for various cytogenic experiments also. Then uh, in next session, we will discuss about the detailed application of anther and pollen culture. Thank you.